channel. I'm Ruotsun Wang and I go by John. I'm a new content creator on this channel. Today I would like to talk about capacity calculation, which is part two of how to analyze the cyclic voltammetry data. In the last tutorial, we discussed capacitance, a very important metric to describe charge storage behavior in electrical W capacitors and pseudo capacitors. Such electrochemical behaviors are described in the type A and type B in this panel. When more Faradaic reactions, especially with more phase transformations, are involved, the derivative of charge with respect to potential deviate away from linear or pseudo-linear behavior. This is when capacitance is no longer descriptive to represent the charge storage behavior in such materials and where capacity should be used instead. Capacity is defined as the integral of current over time. Therefore, to obtain this value, instead of plotting current as a function of potential, which is typically what we see in cyclic photomograms, we plot current as a function of time. We can obtain capacity by calculating the area underneath the curve using numerical integration methods like trapezoidal rule. There are two types of capacity we typically calculate. One is cathodic capacity using negative current. This is when your material is reduced. And the other one is anodic capacity, which is calculated from positive current and when your material is oxidized. The capacity obtained from the calculation is in the units of milliamp second or milliculum. And we typically convert it to milliamp hour by convention. We also normalize our capacity by mass, area, or volume, depending on the applications. After we obtain the capacity values, we can compare them to other materials or systems. We can also evaluate the time scale that this material can effectively store charge by comparing the capacities across a range of charge discharge time. We can also calculate the Coulombic efficiency by comparing anodic capacity to cathodic capacity. This can also help us identify any parasitic reactions involved in the system. If the charge storage is Faradaic, we can also calculate the number of electrons per formula of the active material using the Faraday's law of electrolysis. We will talk about this analysis in future tutorials. We maintain our channel only on the weekends. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. The video in our channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, share, and like our videos to support our channel. Thank you for watching this video today. See you next time.